We now welcome on professional hockey player Jamie Bourbonnet. Uh, she plays on the Canadian national team as well as in the Professional Women's Hockey Players Association for Montreal. Uh, recent, not so recent graduate of Cornell and also alma mater of my high school, Appleby. Yeah. So it's kind of, kind of catching up a bit. How are you, Jamie? Yeah. Great, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Thank you so much for coming on. Really appreciate it. Um, so my first question, this has been like, ever since we connected and planned this interview, this has kind of been my number one question for you is how are you continuing to be like the best at hockey at every level you're on? Because I remember in high school, you were like amazing. And then you went off to Cornell and you're amazing there. And now you're on like the Canadian national team. Like, how do you stay ahead of the competition at all these levels? What oh, are you doing? You. <laughs> thank you, first of all. Um, honestly, it, I wouldn't really say that I'm the best at every level. I think I just have been really committed to hockey since I was young. So I've never really stopped playing. Like at Appleby, I played on two teams and then I committed to Cornell pretty young. Um, I was 14 when I committed. So kind of knew that I wanted to go there. And then my career at Cornell, I had a good career. Um, we had a great team, great coach. So I just was able to, you know, to grow and develop as a hockey player. And then I got noticed by the national team. I played like U18 in development um, throughout college and, and high school in Appleby, but um, I made the senior team my first time when I was a junior, I think. Mm. Wow. So, yeah, so it, it was pretty amazing. Honestly, it's like, you, I still get like, surpri not surprised, but that's like super exciting every time I get named to a roster still, because I'm still pretty young. Like I'm only 22 and there's some girls who are over 30 on the team and stuff. So it's, it's pretty amazing. Like it's, it's incredible, but I think I just work super hard that that's kind of the only reason I can give you is I just. I've never really stopped basically yeah when we were scheduling this interview and you were like well next weekend might be a bit difficult because I'm in training camp for the Canadian national team yeah. I was like oh my goodness like, you'll find another time that's incredible like, yeah, I'm okay. just I don't have anything else going on so we can do whenever, whenever you want well honestly um, I the camps have been so different because we we're in quarantine like we're in a bubble oh, right. camp, so we're in a hotel room for a majority of the time so probably would have had time to do it but our schedule we have so many zoom calls throughout the day that I just couldn't tell you like when I'll be free but yeah it's pretty crazy yeah so do you do most of like the coaching how does that work like the majority of it happens on zoom and then you just skate together basically yeah so we have everyone has their own hotel rooms and everything and then um, all of our meetings are on zoom so whether that's like medical meetings team meetings like we have coach connections, which is basically like talking about tactics, hockey tactics and stuff. And then we get on the bus in like little groups, groups of eight and go to the rink and play and then go back to our hotel room. Wow. Yeah. Is the hotel like a specific for the Canadian national team? It's yeah. like all, wow. Well, when, we were in, when we were in Calgary, we had the whole hotel. Mm -hmm. um, when we're in Halifax, the hotel's really big. So we usually just have a couple floors um but we're like extremely isolated like we don't come in contact with anyone one thing I wanted to ask too is how's the like the group because I, I imagine like when you went off to Cornell like you're kind of in like the elite of hockey or you have been for a, a while starting on the like national team so young I imagine it's kind of like the same group of women you're around um, when you go off to training camp, is it like familiar faces, like old friends, or is every year, is it kind of just like fresh people that you're running into? What's like the group dynamic like? That's a good question. So I, obviously when I first made, like, or got, first got invited to a camp, um, it was basically all of my idols that were there, like <laughs> everyone that I had looked up to. So they were new faces, but I knew them because I've been following their careers my whole life. Um, so that was like, I was starstruck. Like I, like didn't want to say anything because I was didn't want to embarrass myself like I was like on the ice my first couple practices I was so nervous just because I was like these are the girls that I like have dreamt of playing with and like I was yeah. like wow. like one of the girls like Laura Fortino she went to Cornell she was something that I someone that I always idolized and then she ended up like I ended up being her D partner at one of the camps and like it's just like it's really cool now when I go to camps they're all familiar faces they're all friends of mine um especially in Montreal like 14 of us are all on the national team so there's like quite a few familiar faces now that I've been on the team for a couple of years but at first it was like basically all my idols were there so it's pretty cool yeah, 
when you when you first like you know started playing with what you said your idols all these people that you idolized growing up um how did you kind of transition away from like okay these aren't my heroes these are my teammates like what was that transition like did it kind of happen naturally or did you have to continually like tell yourself okay I'm this person's teammate I'm not like I shouldn't ask for their autograph that kind of thing <laughs> well well even now like there's still some people that I'm like starstruck by like Mary yeah. Blanche she played I play with her in Montreal you've probably heard of her she's like the best women's hockey player in the mm-hmm. world um and like she's a good friend of mine but even now like I watch her play and I'm like holy crap this girl is like amazing um my first camp like I said I was super nervous like and I honestly played so bad at practice like I was just like shaking going up the ice like I was so nervous and my coach from Cornell he actually coaches with the national team and he pulled me aside at that camp and was like I know you're nervous like I know these are like basically the girls you've been idolizing he's like but you got invited to this camp because you were good enough to be here and that kind of made me realize like yeah like these are my idols but like I'm also here because they wanted me here they they thought that I deserved to be here and that kind of changed my outlook on it so I I had a a very good actually rest of the camp and I actually made the team that year so it was like a good like switch and if he hadn't said that to me there was no chance I was making that team (laughs) that's awesome that you have that familiarity then I, I didn't realize that the coach that you had at Cornell is also the coach of the Canadian team that must be great that you can like continue that relationship um yeah. if it's good if, if you don't oh, like the coach awesome. <laughs> no he he like he's a huge reason for my success honestly like he is amazing and so yeah he's an assistant coach on the team and has been in the program for a long time and um he's yeah he's amazing it's so nice having him there yeah. was it um when you graduated from Cornell last year and it sounds like you're already you know with the Canadian national team um what was the decision or even was there a decision in continuing hockey um deciding to play in in the professional league continuing with the national team was it a decision at all or was it kind of like a natural progression for your career it was a natural progression I think it would have been different if I hadn't um, made any teams throughout college Mm -hmm. Um, the fact that I went to a couple camps um, and a couple tournaments and world championships with the national team, I knew that I wanted to try to make the Olympics. So the Olympics are 2022. So honestly, the camp that I'm going to in a week is like a huge determining factor of whether or not I'm going to get centralized for that, uh, for the, for the Olympics. So um, yeah, I think it would have been different if I hadn't made any teams, but because I was kind of in the program in the top 47, I guess I just knew that that was my goal. I wanted to keep trying for the Olympics. Yeah. Uh, can you like expand a little bit on like what the Olympic qualifying process is like for you? Yeah. Like what the, the tryouts is like, you know, the steps that you have to take to eventually make it on the team? Yeah. So basically um, this year obviously has been super different super with, weird yeah yeah like it's not a normal year but I can explain kind of what's happened this year so we're all in our own hubs I guess so I've been in Montreal there's some girls in Toronto some girls in Calgary um and we've just been training together um but separately but we're in like little groups so we're all together but not um and then we had our first camp in January that was in Calgary just like getting us back on the ice for the first time together in basically a year Um, And then we had another camp in March that was in Halifax, just another kind of get back on the ice. And then the camp we have in a week is called the World Selection Camp. So um, it's a week long. And then at the end of that week, we're going to have like a Zoom meeting. They're going to tell you if you made the team or if you didn't. If you make the team, you stay. If you don't, you get on a plane and go home. And then World Championship starts on May 6th. So, So I can't so if I were to make worlds I'd be in a hotel room by myself for a month basically um just playing because you have to isolate for worlds and then after the world championships they're going to name the centralized roster um which is the group of 28 girls who will move to Calgary next year and it's basically like you're on the team but you still have to make the Olympic roster so those ha- those cuts happen in December so you'll be training in Calgary from September to December and then December you find out if you're going to the Olympics or not got it got it that makes sense with all the like zoom stuff and like you said staying in a hotel room by yourself like that's if you do well you know you continue staying in a hotel has it been tough to like 
keep your mindset, like stay focused without like any of the normal like outlets that you would maybe have. Like you can't go out for drinks with your team or can't go out to dinner, stuff like that. Has it been tough to like keep your focus? Yeah, it, it's hard, honestly. Like camps are very stressful. So the best part of camp is being able to hang out with your teammates and like you said, like go to a restaurant for lunch, whatever. Um, so yeah, that's been super hard, but we try our best to stay connected and, you know, FaceTime and what we can do, but it definitely is challenging, but we know that it's just temporary. And obviously for the centralized group, they're all going to be together. Hopefully I will be there too, but everyone will be together in Calgary. So it's just short lived, but it, it definitely is hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Even that, like the entire process you, you described of like the, the world selection week yeah. and all of that just doing that isolated by yourself like I can't even imagine going through that just normally uh but then the addition of kind of like having to isolate and not have normal activities it does sound just so so difficult yeah it's stressful yeah. it is yeah. you can't like you're just sitting in your hotel room just going over all your plays on the ice so like did I do fine like did I, am I gonna make it like it's like you don't have any distraction really so it, it's tough have you have you found any kind of distraction? Like, have you gotten really into like me sports, alcohol, yeah, just watching all yeah. the players, <laughs> like, like, yeah. Honestly, no. Like, I like this. Is gonna I hate to admit this, but like TikTok, like I'm just on that because <laughs> I'm like, what else am I gonna do? Like, it's entertaining. Like, but no, not really. Like, TV. It's yeah. so hard to like go to bed, take a nap. <laughs> I don't know. What's the division like? Like kind of as we mentioned at the top, you're you play for Montreal in the Professional Women's Hockey Players Association, uh, and you're also doing all this with the national team. Um, what's it kind of like? Like your, the division of your time between those? Because uh, it sounds like you're kind of bouncing back between Montreal and back in Ontario as well. Where's like the majority of your time dedicated yeah. to? So again, like with COVID, it's been different um usually what it would be like is you're with your pwhpa team and then you play showcases so mm -hmm. travel around play games against other pwhpa teams and um yeah that's basically what the year is obviously with covid we haven't been able to do that so mm -hmm. um we've basically just been practicing so the way that it works in montreal we have two hockey canada practices and two pwhpa practices a week so two of them are just with the 14 girls that are with the national team and then the other two is with like the whole team the 20 22 girls that are on in the pwhpa so it's like this year has been so different honestly because i just graduated i don't really know what it's like normally because this is all that i've known since i graduated so i don't know how different it is when covid's not a thing but that's basically what i've been doing yeah yeah i, I wanted to ask kind of it's so cool the pwhpa i just looked at like it was founded so recently. It's like a budding organization. Um, and I wanted to ask you kind of what if it's like to be part of this organization as it's kind of like just getting its feet underneath it and, and getting started. But I imagine for you, like with COVID and everything, not really, sh maybe not even really sure yet what it, it's going <laughs> to operate like normally. Yeah. So kind of to explain a little bit more what it is, basically, I don't know if you guys heard about um, what happened a couple of years ago, 2019, I think. Um, our league, the CWHL, um, it folded basically because it wasn't sustainable. Um, we're really pushing hard to get a professional women's hockey league. And the PWHPA is basically a league that's going to help get the exposure that we need to create that. So it's kind of like not a filler league, like it's definitely still a league and we're going to play games and, you know, get exposure to women's hockey, but it's kind of just temporary so that we mm. can get people to watch women's hockey invest in us and create a sustainable professional women's league that we can all play in as our regular jobs basically all right yeah i would definitely watch women's hockey <laughs> as, as you're explaining that i'm like that sounds awesome i just remember our games from high school and watching us just dominate everyone because like yeah. you were on the team and amy curler and a bunch of people yeah. are like crazy yeah. good um that's I mean whatever needs to happen to to make yeah. that happen I hope it well, does that's the problem is like a lot of people don't have that opinion you know like if you see like on social media anytime something's posted about women's hockey you just can expect that oh I don't care no one cares comments which is like yeah. really hard because it's like well 
you're taking the time to comment so like obviously you like kind of care so it's like I don't know it's tough like we're in a really tough position of trying to promote ourselves and like prove that we deserve the platform that we are requesting um it's tough a lot of people don't see us in that light that you're saying you know we're awesome we're great but we're, we're getting there well and a lot of this is pretty timely I mean it's always timely but like with the um like the NCAA women's uh, the weight room controversy as well. Like, you know, yeah. have you, with that, like, did you notice um, when you were growing up, like hockey's massive in Canada um, and, you know, both for, you have the best players in the world for men and women. Did you notice that same kind of disparity growing up, like between the men's equipment and the women's equipment, like, or at Cornell, did you kind of, did a lot of that resonate with you? So speaking personally, I'm going to say no, because I went to Appleby and Cornell, which are both incredible schools and they really care about both programs. It's actually kind of funny. Like at Appleby, our dressing room is identical to the men's and it's the same at Cornell, basically just flipped on the other side. So we share a lot of the same resources, both we shared at Appleby and at Cornell. Um, Mm -hmm. So I've, I've been really fortunate in my career that, you know, I haven't really seen that, but I'm not saying it's not there. Obviously at most schools it's there. And I've just been lucky personally that I haven't had those differences between the men's and women's programs, but a lot of schools, um, like if you thinking about like Ohio state, for example, I played there against the women's, their rank is not even comparable to the men's. Like, it's just, really? it's not even funny. They like, play in a different rank. Oh yeah. Like it's, and it's not Why? even, <laughs> Because that's the you way need, you need two ranks. <laughs> yeah, so the men's have this like beautiful arena and then the women's, you know, the women's is they love it. Like for them, like it's, it's their rank. So they obviously take pride in, in it and it's not a, a bad rank. I'm not saying that by any means, but it's definitely not even comparable to the men's, which is like very disappointing. It, is, it, is is there a difference on the ice like uh, i'm trying to think like softball versus baseball like it's a different size field with no, it's the same <laughs> then so, why do they have a se- they built it just, a second it just doesn't rink? make sense. yeah it, like, works, you know. it works like that at most places like boston yeah. university same thing minnesota i believe it's the same thing yeah it or, almost or it seems like excessive like unnecessarily yeah. excessive yeah. that's the way it works in yeah. a lot of places but yeah, at Cornell, it, luckily it wasn't like that. For me. What um, I'm, what was the hockey culture like at Cornell? Um, was it and like everyone in Canada is hockey fanatics? Like your high school <laughs> sounds like it was crazy about hockey. Uh, did you get that same kind of like fan intensity interest in from like the general school population, or was it a little bit of a switch to kind of be like, okay, not as many people in the U.S. care about hockey? Yeah. Well, it's funny. So in Ithaca, where Cornell is, hockey is the sport. Like the men sell out every game. Um, You know, like in most schools in the U.S., obviously football is a big sport. At Cornell, hockey is. So like, I love that because like, that's my sport, obviously. So the men's, for example, like they got like, they were like celebrities on campus almost. Like it was kind of annoying at some point, but, <laughs> <laughs> but like we, we were too, you know, like people loved us. We definitely didn't get as much support from the student body. Um, but the community in Ithaca, like we got, like we had, I think it was the third highest incident of life for fan attendance. Like we, we had like a lot of fans, like, and people who supported us, like would ro- like drive road trips, like hours to come watch us play which was awesome and again like that's because Cornell the main sport is hockey so like I was really lucky um a lot of schools though that's not the main sport so it's tough obviously like you said in the U.S. it's like not as big as it is in Canada um but at Cornell no it's great yeah Yeah. and and you said um which is crazy by the way this like kind of went unnoticed when you said it before but you were recruited from for Canal at like 14, right? I also wanted to ask <laughs> to go back to that. Crazy. I like 14. Oh my God. So I got um, it So uh obviously you're 14, so I I can only imagine like what went into the decision. But was the hockey culture around Cornell like part of that decision? Like what was kind of the driving force um uh in your decision to go to Cornell? Yeah, I <laughs> 
it's actually kind of funny looking back on it now. Like I was, I think I was 13 when I visited Cornell for the first time. Oh and my God. <laughs> I like loved it. Like it was the first school I ever visited. And I heard like pretty naive at the time for me, like to say like, Oh, I want to go here because it's the first school I ever visited. But I don't regret that decision at all. Like, I'm so happy that that's where I chose. I'm like, thank goodness 13 year old me was smart in that. But um, I think the biggest reason was because I loved the girls on the team so much. Like they, I slept over in like their dorms with them. They like got me cookies and like, I'm like this little young girl. So like, they're just like, it, it was awesome. I like loved the team and I like, I loved everything about Cornell. And I told my parents right after I left that, that I wanted to commit there and they were like, well, just hold on. But I ended up just doing it. So, yeah. I'm, yeah. I, I'm a little nervous, though. I think the cookies, the giving you cookies might be an NCAA violation. <laughs> I know, shoot, maybe I cut that off. You, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll cut it in we'll post. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, well, maybe don't air this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, they can, I think they can buy me cookies if the coaches bought me cookies. That wouldn't have That's where <laughs> Yeah. Oh, <laughs> gray area. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh did you ever experience like any hesitation though I mean I imagine like committing at 14 and then you have like all of high school and not actually going there until you're 18 or 17 did you ever think like I don't know if this is the right school for me like I don't know if this is I'm making the right decision here um or were you kind of like fully on board with it the the whole time after you committed yeah, honest, to be entirely honest, um, I did go through a period where I was like, oh my God, like I just committed to a school, the first school I visited, like I didn't even visit other schools. So I went through a period where I was like, did I make the right decision? And I actually told my coach that I was going to go visit other schools just to be sure, mm. especially too, because Cornell's Ivy League. So I wasn't sure if I was even going to get in. I was like, I, I need to get accepted. I need to be able to afford it. So I was like, if that falls through, I need to have a backup plan, basically. Right. So I actually told my coach, I think when I was in grade 11, I said, I'm going to go visit a couple more schools. And obviously, as a coach, I verbally committed to him. He probably wasn't that happy with that. But I was like, I, I was 14. I was in grade nine. Like, I need to I need to make sure that I didn't just make a bad decision. I ended up visiting other schools and still was obsessed with Cornell. So it was kind of just further proved that I was confident where I want to go but yeah yeah I actually remember that like I haven't thought about this in forever but I remember you and some of the other girls who had committed to schools for hockey like when ACTs and SATs came around you're like we have to like bring up our could we have to like get a certain grade or whatever yeah. to get into these schools I can't imagine that level of stress at that yeah age well, that, that's crazy I took, I took the SAT like so many times just because I I got a, a decent mark on it. Like I was like, you know, this will probably get me in, but I was like, I need to be sure because I don't like, I need to get in. Like I've committed to this school. Yeah. Like I, I can't just like, yeah. oh, I'll submit, like an application and pray. Like I was like, I have to get in. So I took it a bunch of times. It was stressful, but honestly, the, the coaches, like they have quite a bit of pull and they can help you. Like if they want you to help you and that doesn't work all the time but like you definitely still have to I still had to be a good student but yeah. but it helps I mean, for sure um when we were at uh when we were at Cal I was always just in awe of the athletes there because like I felt like I was drowning in schoolwork and I didn't play a d1 sport like what was it like being at a you know an ivy league school and balancing the commitments of um of a D1 sport and then also like having potentially like national team commitments as well like how did you juggle all that it was hard like there were times where I would be at like with the national team like writing exams with a proctor in my room like it was it was hard like I'm not gonna lie like it, it there were times that it was really stressful but um we had times on the bus like we would study on the bus or study on road trips and stuff like we made it work it was honestly just making sure that you had good time management and then the school does a really good job like giving you free tutors for athletes um like you could request a tutor and they'll get you someone for free so there's a lot of good resources that I relied on but no it, it is hard like it's it's stressful especially for the, the students who are like in STEM and like like I was, I studied psychology. So like, I mean, I'm not saying that it's not a good major, but like definitely didn't have as much work as some of the other girls who like were constantly doing schoolwork on the bus and stuff. Yeah. Well, seriously, congratulations on graduating then. Oh, I know it was like you. a year, 
ago <laughs> now, yeah. but like that's like yeah. a major, major accomplishment for balancing all that. Uh, in person grad, but I guess I'll just keep waiting for that. <laughs> yeah, we're we're also in the same boat. We kind of think we kind of think they just forgot about us. Probably it's been yeah. Yeah. Or they're yeah. waiting for us to forget. Or like, yeah. Forget. Hopefully, yeah. 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 Well, thanks so much for taking the time uh, to talk with us and everything. Like this was just absolutely awesome catching up with you and then also yeah. hearing about all this. Um, Dylan, did you have any other questions you wanted to get to before we wrap up? Um, I think, uh, like what, what I, I'd love to know just like a little bit more about like, um, 10 years out, like, I, I hate this question for myself. So if you have a <laughs> question, I'm sorry, but like, ho- you know, hockey is such a big part of your life. Um, do you see like 10, 20 years down the road that hockey will like, you'll always want to be related to hockey, doing something in hockey or like is there some other random profession that once you, you know, hung up the stickates for the final time, like you'd love to be like an architect or something? That's a good question. Um, or I, again, maybe a therapist. You studied yeah. psychology. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Podcast um, host. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I'll join you guys. People doing this 10 years now. No. Um, I, yeah, it's a good question. I obviously hockey is something that I want to continue as long as possible, um, especially if we're going to have a league, which um, I think we're making really good strides, I want to be a part of that. Um, and I want to, I want hockey to be my profession for as long as I can. Um, obviously, I'm trying to make the Olympics this year. Um, I'm probably going to try again for 2026, to, regardless of if I make it or not. Um, that's something that I really want to do. Um, but yeah, 10 years from now, like I, I've thought about it. Most people you'd ask would say that they want to be a coach. I don't think I want to be a coach that's not something that's really interested me I mean I like working with kids and you know skill development but I don't think I could be on the bench being a coach that's not Mm -hmm. something I see myself doing but I definitely want to be involved in sport in some way whether or not that's hockey um I don't know exactly what role I would want to go into but definitely something in sport I think for sure totally Totally. Well, well, that covers a third of our topics. Then we just need to yeah. get someone for meat and alcohol. Yeah, you can come on board and <laughs> yeah. so we can start something. You can together. be you can be our sport consultant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. in. Oh, that's it. I know my plan now. There we yeah. go. Yeah, <laughs> we locked that in. Uh, I had one more thing I wanted to ask you about, and I've been wondering about this since we graduated high school. So okay. when you we're at Appleby. I remember this distinctly. We had you on the team, Julia Edgar, Amy Curlew. We had like a bunch of great hockey players. And in the off season, you guys would play field hockey and yeah. just absolutely destroy these other teams. <laughs> but just come and like, I'm sure people just played field hockey like casually. And then I'd read like the updates every week and be like, Jamie Borbin has scored 15 goals <laughs> every game. How much fun was it just dominating these other teams of field yeah. hockey when you weren't playing hockey? That's so funny that you asked me that. Yeah, I like, I love field hockey. Like, I will say, honestly, field hockey is my favorite sport, like, which is crazy because I'm wow. a hockey, professional hockey player. Yeah. 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 I, like, I love field hockey so much. It was so much fun. I actually thought about playing at Cornell as well. My coach wasn't too thrilled. What did that mean? Yeah, fair, um, fair enough. I love it. I actually played last summer. Um, I worked out with some girls on the Team Canada field hockey team and they invited me out and I played and I was like, oh my gosh, like I was not as good as them anymore, but I was like, this is awesome. Like, oh yeah, I field hockey is my favorite sport, hands down. It was so much oh, fun. That was like the awesome. time of Applebee for me. Gosh, yeah. just casually but getting I, invited to another sport. Yeah, that's <laughs> like Canadian Just in your team. off time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> go, oh, I'll just no, go. That's pretty I'm, cool. I'm lucky though, because I'm right-handed in hockey and field hockey is only right-handed stick. So like, it was very easy for me to play field hockey because it's literally the same thing. Whereas like for girls like Julia Edgar, like she's more impressive because she's a lefty and she played field hockey right and was still that good. Like really? that's more impressive. Oh than, my gosh. Yeah. Then I don't know if you ever watched some games, but there's some girls on the hockey team that are lefties. So they would flip their stick to the left. So they'd play upside down with their stick. And our coach was an Olympian. She's like hated it. She's like, this is ridiculous. Like you're not playing the game. Like you're flipping it. Like it's illegal for a hundred percent, a hundred percent illegal, but the, it's high school field hockey. So no one cares. Like, 
but, that is, it's so fun. every every now and then like sports center will like post a clip of like lebron james in high school and all the yeah. comments are like imagine getting out of algebra too and playing against lebron james <laughs> like imagine getting out of like canadian history oh and going to play field hockey against future olympians holding yeah. the stick yeah. backwards yeah. Like 50 and losing. Just compare me to lebron james that yeah that's exactly. Okay, I'll take it. exactly yeah, no, it's, yeah it's pretty awesome Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's so cool to hear about. Um, this is all really cool. Thank you again so much for joining us. Um, Thank you. Really appreciate the time. Anytime. Thank you guys.